Hello World History Lines. Whenever you're on your site for your project, if you scroll down here, you'll notice there's links for the Mac and Via group. And right here is this using sources with academic integrity. I'm going to go over this right now with you. Um, so we're going to click on this and it's going to open up into this Google Doc. I'm going to talk to you about how to use sources with academic integrity. And this guide is going to help you understand how to do that. So the first thing here is anytime you're doing research, you should immediately upon beginning the research process start either a works cited for MLA or for um, APA you're going to start a references page both of these documents are pre-formatted for you so they're going to open up and they're going to ask you to make a copy yes you want to make a copy and what it is is it's a template of the page that you need to place your citations on okay so citations are what you use to um, cite a source and so you can change the name up here to your name and all this stuff up here but it's Essentially, this is pre-formatted for you and it tells you the rules, what your references page should look like, etc. So you can go ahead and begin editing this by adding your own citations, okay? So I would click enter here and I would start entering my citations right here. When you're done with entering in your citations, you can take out this example citation and you can take out this box, okay? So anytime you are doing research, uh, you should always have a references or a works cited page, um, a slide with links on it, or a Google Doc with links on it, or not using any citations at all at the high school level when you're doing research is unacceptable. So you need to make sure that you have have these uh, have one of these going depending on what your citation style is. Let's talk about sources now. Um, as always acceptable sources are databases and here at Reedy High School we use Mac and Via and all of our databases are in Mac and Via okay so when I am in my Mac and Via group these are all the acceptable databases right here okay anything in this databases tab or anything that I put in a group for you guys is also acceptable right so your group is right here so anything that's in here is is acceptable okay um, there may be ebooks or things in your in your groups depending on the class but those are all acceptable as well you can also use websites from from the web um, but you need to evaluate them for credibility you need to evaluate websites using the crap test um, is it current is it reputable is it all the things on the crap test so you need to go through that and you can click on this document right here and it will open up the crap test and it will show you Okay, is it, there it is, is it current, is it relevant, is it uh, authoritative, is it accurate, and is it purposeful? Okay, so those are what you're looking at when you're looking at any website um, and any online news source as well, okay? Um, okay, and then unacceptable things, for the most part, you should never use a blog or a wiki or someone's personal website. Uh, in academic research. Also, you should not use Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia can be edited by anyone at any time, and while it's a great place for you to go and, and look something up just, you know, in general conversation or in general life, it should never be used for academic research, okay? Um, unless you're just going to learn about something and kind of you want to use that as a starting point, that's fine, but you cannot ever cite anything that you learn from that. Um, sometimes, not always, but sometimes a good place to start is to look at the resources at the bottom of a Wikipedia article, and then um, you can possibly use some of those, okay? You never want to use a website that's out of date, and for the most part, you do not want to use any websites of companies trying to sell something, because when you're doing academic research, you don't want to use uh, sales slogan and sales jargon from uh, websites. Also, social media postings, for the most part, should not be used when you are doing academic research unless it is a part of the uh, part of the process um, of of that. Okay, uh, citations. You should always, when you're in databases, you should use the citation tool or the cite button in the database that is provided by the database. Those citations, for the most part, are going to be very accurate and complete, so you can use those. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you choose APA or MLA format, depending on what um, what citation style your teacher or your class is using. Okay, um, You always want to paste those citations into your works cited or your reference pages. Okay. 
Um, when you're in a database, you do not want to use citation generators, okay, because they are not going to generate an accurate citation. Um, however, you do want to use citation generators when you're looking at websites. Once you've evaluated the website and you determine it's a good website, then you can use uh, the Cite This For Me extension right here. If you click on this, it's going to take you to the extension, and you'll notice mine is already added. Um, and or you can also use um, Scribble. You can get an account with this first link, and the second link will open up the Scribble toolbar extension um, so you can use those on websites okay be aware that a link to a website is not a citation just providing a link is not going to um, be counted as a proper citation okay let's talk about images uh, whenever you're looking at images you want to make sure that you are using and citing images from databases and you can also use and cite images, copyright free images from Google. Um, if you're going to modify an image, like if you're going to take it and write words over it or change it in some way, crop it, anything like that, you want to make sure that you are choosing uh, under when you search for um, images that you are choosing uh, an image that is free to use or modify. Okay. And so this video right here is a video helper that will help you um, if you need to know how to how to um, search for those images. You just click on that and watch it and it will show you. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that you are never just pulling a citation from Google and dropping it into your presentation without a citation. You also want to make sure that you're not using copyright protected images in a um, in any sort of presentation, okay? Especially if you're not going to cite it, okay? You need to, you would either have to get permission from the copyright holder um, in order to to use that to use that image. So you want to make sure and avoid avoid that. Okay. Uh, paraphrasing is um, what a lot of people refer to as note taking. Okay. But paraphrasing is actually uh, different than note taking. Taking notes uh, is is you can take notes. Um, uh, but for the most part, a lot of times you're paraphrasing. You want to make sure that you are never copying and pasting at any point during the research process because that is not note taking. That's copying and pasting. Okay. So avoiding plagiarism, uh, avoid similar sentence structure from the original quote. Uh, you can put a term specific to the original quote in quotation marks if it is a term. Um, and we'll kind of talk about that down here when we look at this. But you want to make sure you put that in quotation marks. And then always you want to cite the source. Okay. So effective um, paraphrasing. Put it in your own words. If you use any phrases in original, place them in quotation marks. Add a citation. Even if it's paraphrasing, you're still using someone else's ideas uh, and, and work, and so you want to have a citation. Um, if you're having a difficult time paraphrasing something, then quote it. Okay, You can totally use quotes, but you just need to properly cite it and put quotation marks around it so that um, your teacher knows that, hey, this is a quote I took. Okay, So here's the original quote. So if I wanted to use Use this quote I would copy and paste this quote and then I would come down here and look at either APR or MLA to figure out what I'm supposed to do when I have a direct quote so if I click on this it's going to take me right here to quotations short quotations long that would be a long quotation so if I was going to use that quote in my project here's how I would cite it okay if I'm not going to use this word for word I would need to paraphrase it and so this right here is a, an effective paraphrase of this quote. Here again is the original quote and a very poor paraphrasing of that quote. Okay, so we want to make sure that we are properly paraphrasing or use the quote. Okay, taking notes, paraphrase, put things in your own words, but make sure you document what source that particular. Um, that particular note came from okay make sure you put your sources in your you can either download them when you're in a database you can download the source directly into Google Drive or your scribble account if you have one but never ever copy and paste a whole thing from a database or a website or anything and put it in your Google Drive and then be like oh I'll change this later and then forget to change it and copy and paste it and put it in your project okay so make sure to avoid those those things if you have any questions along the way while you are um, while you are researching please feel free to shoot me an email or come and talk to me here in the library and I'll be happy to help you my email is lambertin at friscoisd.org and I'll happy and I will be happy to help you with anything good luck on your research lines